Roma Wines present... Suspense! Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud! Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight in Hollywood, Roma brings you the young American actor whose sensational rise to stardom has been unparalleled in recent seasons, Mr. Alan Ladd. The suspense play which stars Alan Ladd and which is produced and directed by William Spear is called The One-Way Ride to Nowhere. So with this play, and with the performance of Mr. Ladd, as an adventurous young man named Tom Dwyer, Roma Wines again hope to keep you in... Suspense! thrill of a lifetime. It's safe and sensational and the price is only a dime. A dime ten cents for the fastest and the fanciest ride in Ocean City. It's not a roller coaster, ladies and gentlemen. It's an experience. We give you the breathtaking dip over Moonlight Bay. We give you the tunnel of love. And it's the longest and highest and the very finest scenic railway in the world. How many good looking... Two tickets. Two it is. Now, listen, Tom, is this really necessary? What's the matter with you? Come on, you scared? Well, I just don't like these things, that's all. I never have. Don't be silly. It's no worse than riding to a stick-up in a prowl car. Yeah? Well, I never liked that either. Go on, go on, get in. Uh Oh, no, not in the last seat. That is definitely out. Okay, okay. So we'll ride in the last seat the next time when you're over your stage fright. You'll ride in the last seat the next time. For me, this is strictly a one-shot proposition, and don't expect anything I've got different. Your safety belt, Mac. Everybody got their safety belt buckled? Okay, folks, you're on. Hey, hey, Tom, are we still alive? Well, can't you tell? All right, folks, who's going to ride again? <laughs> what do you say, Benny? Want to try it again? Are you crazy? Come on, come on. It'll do you good. Don't tell me. This thing is a menace to health and sanity. What did I tell you? Look, there's a guy passed hey, out you, back come there. On, come on, yeah? snap out of it. Hey, come on, get up, mister. Hey, somebody give me a hand with this guy. Yeah, here. Come here, I'll help you. All right, you get his legs. I'll take his head. Oh, I don't know why guys ride this thing if they're going to pull a fade out. Uh-oh. This guy didn't pull any fade out. Yeah, well, he ain't exactly the life of the party. You're right there, pal. He's dead. He, he's what? He's dead. Holy gee. Hey, well, I better call a boss. <laughs> All right, folks. You uh, just have to step outside the gates, please. Uh, wait I'm on sorry. Now. There's been a little accident here. Everybody out, please. Go on, everybody out. Hey. What's the matter, Johnny? Ah, that guy passed out. The man there says he's dead. Oh, man. Every season, it's something. Please, folks, outside the gate. Yeah, go on. All right. Stand Stand back there. there. Stand back, everybody. What's the matter, Terry? That guy just died on us. Yeah? How come? I don't know. This man here looked him over. How do you know he's dead? You a doctor? No, officer, but it's uh, not too hard to tell. Where is he? Uh, Back in the last seat. Come on. Keep the mob outside, will you, Terry? Sure. Come on. Break it up now, will you? Break it up. This the guy? Yeah. Hmm. Looks like it must have been heart failure. It doesn't look to me like heart failure. Say, who are you? Dwyer's a name, Tom Dwyer. Yeah? Well, uh... Hey! I never seen this dead guy. He never bought a ticket for me. That's right. He never had a ticket. You mean he rode for free? How could he? He rode for free, all right. Say, how come you know so much about this? Me? Oh, I'm just kind of nosy. Hey, you. Uh, yeah? Do you remember seeing this man get on the car? How do I know? They get on, they get off. I just work here. Don't you remember that my friend and I were going to get in that last seat and then we didn't? Hey, that's right. Hey, who's this? Ben Duffy's a friend of mine. Yeah? Yeah. Now, listen. My friend and I were the last ones to get in that car. We were going to take the last seat, and then we didn't. Then the car pulled out. And when it pulled out, that last seat was empty. Mm. Hey, that's right. That last seat was empty. This dead guy never even got on the car. 
Now you're getting someplace. All right, Dick Tracy, I'm listening. A roller coaster car starts out from this platform all hunky-dory and rips around the tracks about 90 miles an hour. And when it gets back here, there's a dead guy on it that wasn't on it when it started. How do you think he got on there? Dropped out of the sky? Well, figure it out for yourself, pal. If he wasn't on the car when it started, then someplace along the line he was dumped on it. And guys who have been dumped are generally guys who have been murdered. Murder is a rude and terrible customer always. But seldom indeed has this unwelcome guest intruded more incongruously than on this particular evening when he chose to be the extra passenger on a roller coaster ride. Alan Ladd is our star of suspense in Robert L. Richards' story, The One-Way Ride to Nowhere. You have heard the prologue for tonight's tale of suspense. Before we return to Ocean City, the scene of our drama, let's take you for a moment to a pleasant spot to the south. Where are we now? Along the Caribbean, looking into a smart cafe. Capitan! Capitan! Si, senor. You have a fine port wine? I should like something special. Perhaps you, uh... Ah, si, senor. Imported from California. A wine... Excellent. Roma, California port. It's true that in many countries of the world, distinguished Roma wines are imported. Red wines, white wines, dessert wines, sparkling wines. Prized and enjoyed by wine lovers of these countries as rare delights. In many parts of the world, it's been discovered that our own California's sun and soil, plus the skill of Roma's vintners, are to be thanked for some of the truly fine wines. Yet to Americans, Roma wines cost little, for we pay no excessive import duty or shipping costs. Yes, you can serve Roma wines often and proudly to your most knowing, most critical guests. For Roma wine is America's largest selling wine. And at only a few cents a glass, why not let Roma wines add their delight to your family meals and your family's enjoyment? Buy wine tomorrow and specify Roma, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that Roma Wines bring back to our soundstage Mr. Alan Ladd in The One-Way Ride to Nowhere, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Hey, Tom, where you been? We're all supposed to be waiting in here for the chief of police. Didn't make any phone call, that's all. Anybody I know? Jefferson Hotel. You know him? Huh? Hey, what's this all about? Oh, about $400,000 and a lot of people's lives. Uh Uh-oh. Here comes the chief now. All right, quiet, everybody. Chief Haynes wants to say something to you. A man died under peculiar circumstances on the Ocean City roller coaster tonight. And all of you here were either on the car in which the body was found or in the immediate vicinity, like on the platform. Now, cause of death has not yet been determined. But all of you might be needed as witnesses. So we want to know where to get a hold of you. Have all these people been identified and left locations where they can be reached? Yes, sir. Well, then that's all. You can go now. Oh, uh, Chief Haynes. Well? I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Are these the two fellows you told me about, Johnson? Yes, sir. You're a pretty inquisitive young fellow, aren't you? Well, that's my business. By the way, Chief Haynes, haven't we met somewhere before? Not that I know of. What did you want to ask about? Well, for one thing, you said just now that the cause of death had not yet been determined. That's right. The man was blue in the face and apoplectic, but there were no marks of violence on the body. The coroner's working on it now. Maybe the coroner should look at the man's neck. At what? At his neck. Listen, you're no doctor, and neither am I. The coroner of this city knows his business. Okay, Haynes, okay. I just thought I might save him a little time. Well, you're wasting my time. If you think I'm going to give you an inside track so that you can go to this poor man's family with some sales talk that you can help him get some kind of a legal action. Oh, he's got a family, has he? Yeah, he's got a family. Now get out of here. Mm -hmm. And his name is Richard Elliston Brighton, and he's a professor of psychology, and he comes from Chicago, right? So you went through his pockets before my men got there. Now, did I say that? Listen to me, young fella. You know entirely too much about this case for your own good. 
You're from Chicago, too, aren't you? That's right. What are you doing here? On a vacation, visiting my friend here. Well, you better take it. Oh, hello, Doc. What about it? Uh, murder. He was strangled. Strangled? Mm-hmm. When we got a good look at him, we found a thin red mark around his neck. He was strangled with something like, uh, picture wire. Now, isn't that a funny way for a middle-aged professor to be knocked off? Yeah, funny way for anybody to be knocked off. And isn't it a funny thing for a professor of psychology with a, with a family and all to be way out here all alone, so far from home, hanging around an amusement park? No funnier than what you're doing, hanging around here. And that's quite a coincidence, by the way, Mr. Tom Dwyer of Chicago. Chicago's a big place, Chief Ains. Lots of people live there. Uh, say, Chief, what I think of it here is the stuff we took out of his pockets and nothing much, wallet and a few things and... Uh, oop, dropped something there. I got it. Hand that over, Dwyer. Well, well, well. A souvenir postcard. Sheila Kennedy, Ocean City. Hey, she's quite a cutie, too. I said hand it over. It's material evidence. Sure, sure, sure. Here you are. One of the local tent show girls, I take it? Know anything about her, Chief? Now, listen, Dwyer. I got enough on you already to hold you on suspicion. Take my advice and keep your nose out of this. Come on, Tom. This isn't doing you any good. Yeah, that's right, Ben. And anyway, we got a date with a lady. They're lovely, they're luscious, they're delightful, and they're daring. The most gorgeous girls. The hey, uh, Bud, can we go in now? Yeah, what did she say? What's that? I said, can we go in now? Oh, yeah. Okay, fellas, down there, the second door. I told her about you, and she says it's okay. Thanks. Make it snappy. She goes out in a couple of minutes. They're lovely, they're lovely. Ah, they're room of her own. Sheila must be all right. Hey, I thought you said this was business. It is. Wait out here, will you, Ben? Oh, so when it's dames, I wait outside. I said this was business. I don't know you. Well, maybe we've both been missing something. How did you know I came from Chicago? You'd never have got in if you hadn't pulled that. It was a good guess, wasn't it? Well, I don't know you and I don't want to know you, so beat it. Now, look, Sheila. I didn't come here to cause you any trouble. My name's Tom Dwyer, and I... Are you going to leave, or do I call the bouncer? Sheila, a man was murdered in the amusement park tonight. Murdered? Well, hadn't you heard? Everybody has, but I didn't know it was... He was from Chicago, too. And Sheila, he... He had your picture in his pocket. My picture? That's right. So... So what? There must be 50,000 old goats from one end of this country to the other with my picture in their pockets. They sell them at the show. How do you know how old he was? I... I don't. I, I was only... Professor Brighton didn't come around in the last two or three days to talk to you about... Uh, about anything, did he, Sheila? No. I don't even know what you're talking about. you got no right to question me. You know what I think, Sheila? I don't know, and I don't care. I think you're in a tough spot, and you'd like to be out of it. Only you uh, don't know quite how. Well, what if I am? Well, maybe I can help you. Nobody can help me. This is murder, Sheila. That's not so good. What's your angle in all this? I wouldn't kid you. I'm a private detective. I make my living in things like this. Aside from that, and as a general rule, I... I just don't like murder. Listen, mister. What'd you say your name was? Dwyer. Tom, to you. All right. I don't know why, but... You seem like a nice guy. Mm, I am. Well, you know me better. Might have been nice at that. Keep out of this. It's for your own good. You get nothing but grief. Uh, what kind of grief? The worst kind there is. You saw what happened to the professor. Poor guy. Get out of the amusement park. Get out of Ocean City and stay out. Thanks, Sheila. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. But I'm in kind of deep already. Is there, uh, is there anything particular I should look out for? Come on, Sheila. You're on. Okay. Listen, Tom, just remember, that roller coaster isn't the only one-way ride to nowhere around here. One-way ride to nowhere. Yeah, what did she mean by that? It was a tip-off, man. Maybe. Yeah, red hop, they're all hop. Yeah. One way right to nowhere, huh? That's what the professor got all right for free, but how? He was dumped on. I still say how. Well, oh, that little problem doesn't bother me, but... Hey, listen. Did you hear that? Yeah. One way ride to nowhere. Come on. Hey, I think it's around there to the right. Yeah, Bulletproof automobile. Huh? Where? That 
Tent show next to the roller coaster. Take it easy now. <laughs> okay, but I... Then you worry me sometimes. Did you know this thing was here? Well, it wasn't here last week. How am I supposed to know what you want? If you'd tell a guy something once in a while, it wouldn't... Well, you never heard of Wires McGuire either. No? Skip it. This guy's going into his routine again. Ladies and gentlemen, step right up. Inside you will see the actual bulletproof automobile in which the famous Jarvis gang sped from the scene of the $400,000 Springfield mail robbery, the most daring holdup in modern times. Now, this is the very limousine in which they were pursued for 50 miles. Three of them died. The fourth became a raving maniac on that last fatal one-way ride to nowhere. Step right in, ladies and gentlemen. And this show is about Benny. Benny, now I know I'm right. Is this what you came down here for? Not exactly, but there's been some funny talk lately about this mail robbery job in some funny places. I still don't get it. There were four guys in on that. Three of them dead and the others in the bug house. That kind of closes the books, don't it? I'll give you a little tip, Benny. They never found the money. Huh? And the insurance company's got a standing offer of a 10% reward. <whistles> 40,000 bucks. Step right over, gents. The original bulletproof automobile. Okay, yeah. maybe we'll at that. How much? Two bits. A piece. Yeah, yeah. Step right inside, gentlemen. Now the car that you see before you... You, uh, you don't have much business, do you? Hey, what are you, a couple of public accountants? No offense, it just seems too bad. It's a small exhibit. Oh, you're telling me. Ah, these hicks down here, they don't appreciate nothing. Yeah, it must be pretty hard, judging what the public will go for. Yeah, I thought this murder automobile would be a sensation, something modern, you know. And my brother found in a junkyard in Indiana. Cops must have sold it at auction or something. Look, uh, would you really like to get rid of this heap? Like to. Don't worry, I already have. Yeah? Listen, brother, the minute I found out that I had a turkey, I went out and found me a sucker, but quick. Well, how did you find him? Uh, well, I, I didn't exactly find him. He, he come by, you see. He's making some sort of a collection for some cop's museum. Uh, Capone's bulletproof car, Dillinger's artillery. You know, I got my price, though. Uh, oh. Oh, no, it's not too bad, Benny. Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure it is. Uh, what's too bad about it? Well, to tell you the truth, we're making sort of a collection ourselves for a big New York exhibitor. And sure. I, I thought maybe we could do a little business. Oh, I'm sorry, mister. I just closed the deal tonight. If you'd only come around just a couple hours sooner, you... Well, do you suppose this man you sold, sold the car to would be reinterested in selling at, at the right price? Yeah, I don't know. It, it'd cost you plenty, though. Confidentially, he paid me a thousand bucks cash. Hmm. Well, where could we find this guy? Well, he should be here any minute. He, he's going to pick up the papers and things. Hey, you want to come out and back and wait from there? I was just going to knock off anyway. Well, thanks. I know, but he's not the You know, I had a hunch maybe I should have held on. How's a guy supposed to know in this crazy business? Well, here you are. Well, quite a cozy little place you got here. That's all right. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Hey. Hey, what's that? Huh? Oh, them roller coasters. The tunnel goes right under the floor here. It's enough to drive you nuts. Yeah, I can imagine. That door over there must open up right where the tunnel comes out, huh? Yeah, I guess it does at that. I never looked. It's all nailed up. Hey, there used to be another wing on this building in the old days, wasn't there? That was the door to it. It might have been. Yeah, I guess it was. Say, does this Mr. Uh, uh, the guy um... I sold the car to, uh, McGuire. McGuire. Yeah. Oh, does he have a, sort of a business manager with him or anybody like that? We had a couple of guys with him once in a while. I really didn't pay no attention. I suppose he's been hanging around here fairly steady the last few days, huh? In and out, you know. He ought to be here anyway. Oh, here he is now. What's the matter? Yeah, I don't. Hello, Mr. McGuire. We was just talking about you. Yeah? Who was? Uh, me and these two gentlemen. They want to see you about... Uh... Was this the guy that came to see you, Sheila? I don't know. Sure I am, Sheila. Come on, tell him. Well, I guess that's him. Okay. You can run along to the hotel, honey. Ed, listen, please don't. Do like I tell you. Harry, you stay here with me. Okay, Ed. I got all your papers and things, Mr. McGuire. Everything's here in this envelope. Thanks. And what you two fellas want to see me about? Just a little business proposition. My name's Tom Dwyer, and this is Ben Duffy. Hiya, Mr. McGuire. Ed McGuire. Pleased to meet you. You can beat it now, Ferreira. We'll take care of everything. Okay. Well, uh, so long. So long. Uh... Watch the door, Harry. Now, what's your proposition? Well, I understand you bought Ferrara's car. That's right. You interested in uh, used cars? Some used cars. How interested? Enough to make an offer. Your, uh, your friend here in on the deal? No, he just came along for the ride. Well, uh, I got a partner. Well, where do we find him? We don't. 
He'd have to come here. And we'd have to send somebody after him. Somebody like, uh, like your friend. Okay. Now, listen, Tom, I don't... What's his name and how does my, uh, my friend find him? Name is Johnson. George Johnson. He's at 2854 Drexel Boulevard. Just tell him I sent you. Uh, Tom, I don't think I ought to leave. Take the... it easy. The... And while you're out, I... I wish you'd do something for me. First. What? Take up my mail. It won't be out of your way. Your mail? Yeah, that's right. Do that first. I'm expecting a very important special delivery, and I want you to stop by the Jefferson Hotel, where I'm staying. And ask for a bellhop named uh, Ted Martin. He takes care of all my stuff. The Jefferson? That's right. And be sure to see Ted Martin. He's the only one who can help you, so ask the clerk for him and hurry back then. Ted Martin and Jefferson. Well, okay. You want me to go, Ed? No, you stay here. Now that he's out of the way, what do you know? Enough. You're a pretty bright boy, aren't you? You gonna talk? Why not? I know, for instance, why he bought that car. I think he knows too much. Let me handle this. Keep talking, bright boy. Well, after that Springfield nail job, nobody ever found the money. 400,000 bucks is a lot of letters. And you think it's still somewhere in that car. Did you figure that all by yourself, or did you get a tip when you were in the federal pen, yeah. along with Duke Jarvis? <laughs> you know any more cute answers, bright boy? Sure. I come from Chicago. I know that around there you got a nickname, and they call you Wires. I told you you knew too much. Mm-hmm. On account, you got a reputation for being very handy at disposing of troublesome guys with a length of picture wire twisted around the neck. Have you any idea what you've just talked yourself in for, bright boy? I know what I'll talk you in for if you don't play ball. Well, now, what do you think of that? I think we're wasting time. Listen, McGuire. I not only know how you killed Professor Brighton, I know why. Sure you do, bright boy. Sure you do. You think I'm kidding, huh? Professor Brighton was a psychiatrist. They used to call him into the federal pen to examine guys who were wacky. Huh. They called him in to examine Duke Jarvis. Duke was the last of the Jarvis gang. The rest were all killed in the holdup. He was wacky, all right. So wacky, he let stuff about the money being still hidden in the car. So when the professor heard about the car showing up, he thought he could pick up a piece of change. The poor guy, only you caught up with him first, huh? You got it all figured out, haven't you? Yeah. yeah all but one thing. I don't think you're smart enough to pull this all by yourself. I think you do have a partner. I tell you, we're wasting time, Oh, no, we're not. Now, listen, bright boy. Who are you working for? What difference does that make? Palanty. Don't you think I want to know who else is in on this? What do you say, bright boy? There's nobody. I'm working alone. Cover him, Harry. Okay. You'd better talk, bright boy. There's nothing to say. Uh, Who else knows about this? Nobody. This ain't gonna do your face any good, bright boy. Talk! Go to talk! Watch him, Harry. I think he's coming out of it again. Yeah, this ain't getting us no place. Suppose his pal comes back. He'll never come back. By the time he finds out, there ain't no such guy as George Johnson. Take a look, Harry. Yes, me. Uh, it's Chief Haynes, Ed. Okay, open up. Hey, I thought I told you. How did he get here? He walked in. He knows plenty. How much? The work. We've been trying to sweat out of him who he's working for. Haynes. I know where I've seen you before. Your picture. You were a guard at the federal pen when Jarvis and McGuire were there. That's how you heard about the money. When McGuire came down here, he... You had to play ball because you were chief of police here. He's got to go, McGuire. Sure, I know. So we give him the business and dump him out of the side store there into the roller coaster like we did the prop. Are you crazy? You can't get away with two jobs like that the same night. So what do we do? Anything. Dump him in the bay. Make it look like an accident. Anything. Hey, there's an idea. And don't try to get fancy about it this time. But you just gave me quite an idea, Haynes. Quite a good idea. <laughs> Keep that hat down over his face and hold him up straight. Yeah, I got him. What seat do we want? What's the difference? Car's almost empty anyway. Get him in. Take the middle one. All right. Buckle your safety valve. Keep that belt loose. Okay, everybody. You're off. Here we go. Going into the tunnel now. Tie his hands and feet while we're in the dark. Yeah, I'm doing it now. Got the sash weights on him? Yeah, around him. 
We're out now. Watch him. Hey, what was that? What's the difference? Hang on, and we're starting up. We're coming to the top. You know what to do, Harry? Yeah. When you hit the bottom of the dip over the bay. Okay. I'll yell, and we both heave together. He'll go down into that bay and sink like okay, a... Okay, McGuire, put up your hands, both of you. Put them up. Huh? made it. Tommy, you okay? Yeah, sure. What do you think you're doing here? The federal pinch, McGuire. I'm Ted Martin, Department of Justice. Staying at the Jefferson Hotel. Get it, McGuire? Hey, Tom, you ought to get to a dock. No, no, I gotta get down to the police. Hey, Ted. Ted, listen, never mind about these guys. Get Haynes, chief of police. We've got a couple of men down there already, Tom. When you phoned, I figured you might get mixed up with him. We've had our eye on the chief for quite a while. Well, I'll see you later. So long. Thanks, Ted. Hey, you were taking an awful chance, Tom, playing so cagey. Well, I had to be sure first. If that dame hadn't stuck around and tipped us off, we just about made it when the car went through the tunnel. That, uh, Sheila dame, huh? Uh-huh. Say, Ben, I, uh, I think I got a date with a lady. Oh? So what do I do? Well, I'll tell you. Here's a dime advance out of your $20,000 reward. Go take a ride on the roller coaster. <laughs> And so closes The One-Way Ride to Nowhere, starring Alan Ladd. Tonight's tale of... Suspense. In just a moment, we'll hear again from Mr. Ladd. First, though, may I pass along this thought. Spotted about the globe, wherever wine grapes grow, there are a few wineries whose products are made for world enjoyment. Among such wineries, right here in California, are those of Roma... And we who live in America have the pleasure of enjoying Roma wine at exceptionally low cost. For we buy it free of duty and free of excessive shipping costs. Try, for instance, Roma California Sherry. Here is the queen of appetizer wines. And not only that, a wine so delicious it is suitable to serve at any time, cool or chilled. But no matter what your preference may be, you will find a Roma wine costing far less than you would expect to pay for such distinguished wine. So, if you have not already tried Roma wines, tomorrow make your first purchase. Select the type of wine you love best. Then you, too, will know why Roma wines have a universal appeal. Why they are America's largest selling wine. But remember, before you buy wine, buy war bonds and stamps. This is Alan Ladd. I can't tell you I enjoyed working on suspense this evening. And next week, I know you'll want to be listening, as I certainly will, to Lucille Ball in a very exciting story called Dime a Dance. Thank you, Mr. Ladd. Alan Ladd is currently working in the Paramount picture, and now tomorrow. Don't forget, then, next Thursday, same time for Lucille Ball in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Columbia Broadcasting.